Hello, Davin peeps and animologists. It's Jane. I'm down in my studio and I want to show you popcorn. <laughs> uh, Zorro. Actually, what I really want to show you is how fabulously dry pastels like the palette pastels I'm going to show you, how beautifully they work on top of the joyful gesso. So I've got the little bases in the background uh, that have already dried and these are my palette pastels. There's four palettes and as you can see when you open them, they actually nestle into each other so that you can put a whole bank of colors. So I like to put all of the matte colors together and I've labeled them, named them. Uh, there are little swatch cards that come with them so you can see all of the names and I've just written that on with a white paint pen. The fourth palette is actually a duochrome metallic and pearl palette uh, and I always use this at the very very end so I tend not to put it in my initial stack when I'm doing when I'm building up a face and adding the color like I'm going to add. You can use all sorts of application tools for these. I'm going to start with the sponges. These are the I Heart Art sponges. Two different densities. I'm going to use the much softer one and just like you would with a face. Put on a nice little soft application of the palette pastel. I'm mixing up the different colors and I just want to show you what they look like or what the colors look like on plain paper as well. Why not start to build up a little bit of interest in the background and I'm literally just dabbing the pastel on. Now the pigment's going to stay there uh, pretty well, but a spray fixative uh, at the very, very end when you've finished everything or some cheap hairspray that doesn't have any oils or conditioners in it, that's going to help the pastel stick on there. You can try stick pastels. Uh, if you don't have my palette pastels, you could try these different tools, lifting your the pastel off your stick pastels uh, and play around with those. The palette pastels in my collection have a ground super, super finely and that's what helps makes them work so well in this way. It's the way I wanted them to work. So I'm also using my little button blenders. That's that eyeshadow thing. It's just a super long looking eyeshadow thing. Slightly different tip to normal eyeshadow uh, applicators, but it's got that nice feeling and that flexibility. And I'm also going to use power pastels. So these are like a super duper version of the crayons you had as a kid, just more pigment. Uh, they're a mix of oil and wax, not water soluble. And I'm putting, I'm using a light color called Kinetic so that I don't have any dark lines, but the palette pastel loves to stick to the power pastel. I know, pastel, pastel, pastels. Pastel can be used as another word for crayon. Uh, it can also refer to a flat pastel like this or like my palette pastels or like a pastel stick. The same word means all the different things. Uh, as long as it's fabulous to use, we don't care about the name. I'm also using one of my symmetry grids. This is a handy little tool that I have on my in my store that helps me just line things up, just check things that the eyes are even. And when I've popped this down, I can see, okay, I've got the middle uh, lined up nicely, but one eye is a little bit higher than the other. And it's easier to just get a little bit of symmetry happening at the beginning. I don't like to get too pedantic about it, but I just don't want my own artwork to annoy me. So I'm just looking for what's not going to annoy me. And I'm also using just that paper towel just to do some measurements, just counting across the squares. And I realized the uh, jawline was a little bit wider on one side than the other. Sometimes that can really throw the face off. You think, oh, the eyes are uneven. And it's not, it's the jawline. Uh, or the chin, nose and mouth just aren't stacked up. If the face is turning, those features still turn with each other, but they change a little bit. I just want to do a little straightforward, straight facing face for this. I quite like drawing this pose because it seems very direct and the person on the page in my journal was really looking out at me They've got a message. So if I'm drawing someone looking right at me, straight back at me, 
it's like my little my subconscious is has a message for me which i will discover as i create my art this is part of the brush buff set it's a uh, the brush spa it's a little silicon heart with texture at the front and bottom and if i rub my uh, little applicator on there my batten blender it just knocks off some of that loose pastel one of the lovely things about pastel is you can remove it with an eraser so you can create other little shapes and then use a brush just to wipe the little crumbs and whatnots away rather than blowing on it uh, if you you can actually do a little bit of spittle and sometimes that can not be so nice for the artwork and you've got a little spot there that other pastel will stick to and we want things to say all lovely and soft and dreamy. Uh, it's really fabulous using this uh, lighter coloured crayon uh, on there just to help flesh out the little details. And then as you will see, I sort of acts as a little barrier, a little dam for the pastel. But if I also put ink in there, it would do the same thing. But it also sticks to it a little bit differently and gives it a little border. So it's actually a lovely... A little way of working and I love using the batten blenders just dabbing on those colors the gorgeous thing about palette pastels or pastels in general is the way that you can just keep layering those colors it's not like the leaning tower of Pisa though that like there is a limit <laughs> you can't just keep going taller and taller and taller uh, that was a strange analogy but uh, more like a stack of pancakes can't just keep going up above there's a limit a physical limitation but it's nice to find out where that limitation is uh, because it, it, then when you start to have the pastel just start digging deeper and, and deeper down into the uh, substrata all of the effects are lovely i'm adding a little bit of sea light a little bit of light around the eye there pastel well pastel in general is a wonderful way for contouring but when you are combining it with the joyful gesso or any of my acrylic paints that I've done it just works so well because all of my paints are ultra matte so I'm building up to a lighter and lighter highlight so that I've I'm using uh, like Foley which is a lighter cream and then a little bit of bling which is a very very light beige working right up into the white of whisper and then if i want to add a really full-on white highlight i can get out another white crayon or a white paint pen at nearer the end and i'm also using some of my shimmering pastel so this one has it, like a shimmer it has a, a gleam to it there's two palettes a warm palette cool palette and yes that is a mermaid's tail embossed across the top just makes it a bit more fun here I'm adding some of the Mineral Eyes palette, which is, it's a gleam as well, but slightly different. It's got duochromes. It's uh, oh, like a baked um, eyeshadow. This is a baked pastel. So these look like eyeshadows. This is all on purpose. It was part of my Making Faces collection. Uh, and I mean, eyeshadow was really stolen from the artists, uh, like a lot of cosmetics are. Uh, but these are pigments so people sometimes ask me could I use these as an eyeshadow technically you could but they might stain your skin temporarily uh, it's not recommended but um, eyeshadows have other ingredients in them to make them eyeshadow and stick on your skin and these are as close to just pigment as we can get them so that they are beautiful throughout so it's really just a different form of a, a chalk pastel that is exactly what they are in this very compact form so that you can have all of these colors open at once that's why i did them and it just makes them so much easier to use i've got the cool palette warm palette and the beige skin tone palette the neutrals which of course have lilacs and whatnot in them. I'm using the uh, Power Pastels, which are the crayons. I've got two, actually no, I have three types of crayon, but the Power Pastel is the only non-water soluble one at time of recording, because I do keep adding things to my collections all the time. And I find it funny, even though I did 
use my little symmetry grid there at the beginning to get things level. I've already gone out of alignment, but our faces are not symmetrical. And it, I think it adds a little bit of character to the artwork if the face is a little bit uh, unsymmetrical anyway. But it also does drive me crazy. I do <laughs> like to try and keep things a little bit symmetrical. But can you see where I just put that highlight and I didn't put it the same in each eye? I didn't put the uh, pupil in the same point in the eyes and even that sets off the symmetry a little. So learn by my... I, I'll can fix this later on if it bothers me, but just watch what I'm doing. I'm, I'm watching what I'm doing as we go as I re record this because, of course, I'm doing this voiceover uh, after I've done the live stream. So I'm talking to people, I'm looking at chats as I'm creating during the live streams. Absolutely love doing it. I get to know everybody. It's so much fun. But I'm talking and I'm distracted, and then, you know, things get a bit uneven. That's just what happens. Now we want to get a, a few little finer details. So something that works very well with everything we've used so far are coloured pencils. So my coloured pencils are called Magic Wands because I think coloured pencils are magic wands. They're sort of the shape of a magic wand. You wave them at the paper and magical things happen. I'm also using an eraser to lift out some of the other areas that I've already started. And I do like to use art supplies that give me that chance to change things uh, if I need to. I'm not ever locked in. That makes me feel very free and comfortable as I'm creating. Uh, also, just because the little uh, uh, holder that the pencils are in uh, is part of my Artful Storage collection, which I'm super, super, super in love with and kind of proud of because it's just so versatile. It's really been oh, like art changing. I can't say life changing, but it is art changing in my studio because I, I can find things. And especially like when I'm creating live and doing all of these things, you know, there's a little bit of extra pressure and being able to find what it is that I want uh, is wonderful. But also when I'm creating, I'm very often I'm, I'm working intuitively. I don't know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I'm kind of looking for colours. So if I've got everything open and available to me, I um, I just make better selections. I have a lot of, I don't get out of creative flow trying to find something or think, oh, what would be, I'm, I'm grabbing it before my creative flow is even broken. It's all part and parcel and I like that feeling. Uh, in my left hand, I've got a selection of my, uh, skincare collection magic wands these are all colors that are great for portraits people of every beautiful color that exists and oh my gosh the amount of dog hair on my jumper please sorry I, you've seen the dogs and we are with each other all the time and they're very fluffy and very hairy so <laughs> I just end up with hairs everywhere anyway I like to put a selection of the colors that I think I might use in my left hand it just makes everything go very um, quickly it's just a habit that I uh, have and I especially love doing that with um, the pencils and using my uh, this is a color called lash line mm -hmm. all of the names of the skincare pencils sort of have a little hint of what they are for and you know like for skin for the wood line for lash line. you don't have to use them like that at all for me, it was a fun way of naming things. And the coloured pencils, especially my magic ones and from the two different collections, they, they are perfect with the Joyful Jess. So I have a particular way of working and I've taught a lot of people through my books and through actual in-person and online workshops and watching people learn. Oh, and this is a gorgeous white paint pen. This is the <laughs> pinpoint tip in the musical market just as we fly past. Uh, the pencils are just a wonderful creation with the, um, with the really ultra matte paint like the Joyful Gesso because it just... It really grabs onto it without eating the whole pencil for breakfast. Uh, you can still erase it 
which is really nice when people are gaining confidence. And also, you know, if you're a more proficient artist, gives you a little back door to change things around. I'm really building up a nice little smoky eye there. And I think she needs some color in her hair now. So let's get the power pastels back out. She obviously has to have pink hair, like why wouldn't you? And uh, this will resist ink and watercolor because it is um, oil and wax. It's a combination of the two. And then I'm going to put in some ink uh, that I've got inside one of my little mini water brushes. And this is the ink called Dionysus from the Gods and Monsters collection. It gradiates and splits and forms different other unusual colors. There's also a clear crayon in the Power Pastels and I'm also putting that down uh, for the hair as well. So it resists the, the uh, ink. Adding a bit of water, you could do the watercolor over or any of my inks or any ink uh, over the top as well. The Power Pastel is a little bit water soluble because it hasn't been fixed yet. So it will move a little bit just depending on how much you've grounded into the background there. And I'm, I'm loving these colors, that soft purple hair. I wish I could have such colored hair. Well, I suppose I could. I wish I was brave enough, let me say that. And I want to add a little definition for the lashes and for that lash on the pupil. So I'm using tattoo ink, which is my carbon ink, permanent ink inside one of the water brushes. So that's got the flexible brush nib and it can't get ruined or can't get um, waxes and oils and whatnot like a pen might. We wouldn't want to be putting one of the Epic pens or my Funton pens or any of those types of tools over this. This kind of thing loves it. No problems. I could leave the background white, but why? Uh, let's do something more fun. I'm going to use a color called Indicolite and I'm using the skinny mini brush to put that color around. I'm just popping a little trust the mess sheet in there so I don't get paint going onto the other pages and sticking them together. This color is the color of the roofs of houses in Paris. It is an action Indicolite's a specific color of to describe that beautiful soft blue gray i actually took a color meter and measured this color <laughs> so that i would have it to use in a beautiful art supply someday and here she is so that's inspired intercolite in the background beautiful the beige a combination of different beige gessos very very loosely applied for the background and then palette pastels power pastels <laughs> a little bit of shimmering pastels look at them all their pretty colors uh, over the top as well as gods and monsters inks and the beautiful magic wand colored pencils oh look at that lovely little Dionysus so that is a beautiful fountain pen ink I've used Merry Melon and a little bit of uh, incredible ink in cherry to make that color for the hair and now I've got these lovely two girls. It just was a, an exercise that started out for me, turned into a lovely page of uh, two cool eyed girls just wishing us all well. And if you'd like to see more of the collection, you can see everything at janedavenport.com. Some of what I showed you is exclusive to my website, some of it's available all around the world with creative expressions. But all the answers as well as lots of other free content are at janedavenport.com.